And when I stand on the corner, back corner of his property, I look directly into my yard. So maybe you might call me the ringleader, but <laughs> it is, I am probably one of the most affected right off the bat. So I request that uh, the videos be played, uh, the longest one being four and a half minutes, and there's a couple others that were done during the day, very short, and then a couple photos of my house so that you can see my relationship to where the business is proposed. I see. Thank uh, you. Yep, thank you. Uh, what I'd like to do is go through public comment here, and then uh, I'll pull the board on the, the video question, and we'll see where we, okay. where we end up on that. Because I feel there's just one more comment I would like to make, and that is I would have thought that after that video was played that he would have cleaned up his act on his existing property, but he hasn't. So I feel whatever he's doing there is going to get imported to the new business. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anyone else wish to address the board? <coughs> Hi, my name's Holly Draper. I live at 9931 West Oak Forest Drive. And uh, sorry, I'm not used to getting in front of people, <laughs> especially the last year and a half working at home. But I just want to say that we're not against any business going in there. It's just that it really needs to be the appropriate business. And I don't believe that this would be an appropriate business. It needs something right next door is a daycare. It needs something small like that, a, a doctor's office, a tax person's office, you know, just something that's not going to be disruptive to the neighborhood, which I believe this would be. The road is very narrow. I live three doors down from there, and you cannot park on either side of the street. You have to park on one side or park on the other. And a lot of people don't know that. There's no signage for that. But if that happens, there's no way for emergency vehicles to get through. So that's my biggest concern. Just get, I think, the appropriate business would be better. Thank you. Hi, I'm Brittany Price. Um, I live on 9921 West Marguerite, so I'm the road over. Um, my main concern, I know this is kind of repeating, but is the congestion. That intersection is horrible in the afternoons, and I feel like a, a store that's going to have constant people going in, like I know how congested the stores that are on the, um, his other properties are. And there's always traffic through there. I know there's other businesses in that area that contribute to the traffic as well, but um, just, I think it's just gonna compound the, pro the traffic issues um, that we already have in that area. Thank you. Thank you. And my name's Lee Draper. I'm at 9931 Oak Forest Drive. My wife just spoke. Um, I wasn't able to make the last meeting. Uh, I was out of town. But this place, building, right next to a daycare, <coughs> this is not a commercial area. His other place up there on York House is surrounded by Ace Hardware, Jewel, Burger King, the Chinese place, his building. That's all commercial. Our little street here isn't commercial. We don't need all kinds of traffic here. We had a fire on Old Forest. A neighbor's house burned. And we had three or four fire departments come down, and it was all plugged up the street. Nobody could get by. Cars were parked in the street. We had to move cars to get the fire trucks down there. We don't need that kind of stuff here. It's just there's no room on our streets. And when the grocery stores open, restaurants open, 
You got the daycare right next door. Now, three, four, five o'clock, everybody's getting out of work. People are stopping at the restaurant, people at the grocery store, people stop to get their kids. The grocery store <laughs> fills up parking lot, and there's still people wanting to get in. Now you got these young moms and dads coming to pick up their kids at daycare. Where are they going to park to pick up their kids? It, there's just not enough room for all that. And that's my piece. Thank you. Hi, my name is Patricia Shales Rupp. I live at 9956 West O'Forest Drive, literally right across the street and down a little bit over right next to Mike. <laughs> Um, I'm very, I'm a nervous speaker, so I actually wrote a statement. I'll try to read it as fast as possible. Sure. Um, I want to start off by expressing my disappointment that this subject was, has even made it this far. At the previous meeting on September 2nd, Chairperson Ochoa asked for a motion just to vote on whether this should move forward, and nobody would even motion it. Her and the legal counsel that was here literally had, like, talked these people into putting, actually motioning it so they could vote on it. Nobody even wanted to vote to bring it this far. She has some kind of a personal interest in this building because she even made it on the, for the first meeting, the Zoom call, where she actually stated that she shops there and she thinks it's just a lovely place, but apparently she's blind to all the garbage outside. I made it a point of actually going out today at 3.15 when rush hour starting up on Sheridan Road and drive past his business. He was there and the whole outside was nothing but trash, including there in front of that store. And then when you go around the corner on Lewis, they have like the bakery side over there and the parking lot there was filled with nothing but trash. And he was there. I saw him. I know it was him for a fact because he went over to that building across the street from our house so many times from the winter until even now still going over there. I thought he was a real estate agent for the amount of people that he hauled in and out of that building. <coughs> On uh, Thanksgiving Day of last year, somebody dumped a TV off behind that building. And in the spring of this year, just well, not even spring, when the snow ended, he went over there with some people and dropped off a bunch of bags of rock salt that he's apparently storing inside that building and left a skid out behind the building. That garbage sat over there until two days before the last meeting, which was August 31st. They finally went over and cleaned that up, along with a bucket of trash they left there that blew over in wind, and nobody did anything about it. We don't want that in our neighborhood. I'm sorry. If you're trying to make a left off a of shared non our road, or even trying to get out of our road, it's scary. And then we got to deal with these people, and of course the exit that you're planning on is going to be right across the street from their driveway. I have been hit almost several times going past that one over on Eurocross Road. I don't even go over in that area for one of those reasons. The fact that I've been almost hit over there several times because of people making illegal lefts in there, pulling up for an oncoming traffic. We don't need that. And these people, if their stop sign is, their traffic is backed up from the stop sign to where this driveway is going to be, which I think is less than 100 feet. They're not going to sit and wait for people to move forward so that they can get out. They're going to pull across and block the road. So anybody trying to actually get home is not going to be able to even get in their driveway. This is not right, you know. We're the ones that are paying for our houses over there. We're the taxpayers. We're the ones that have to worry about our property, you know, depreciating. And it's, it's not fair. Our property taxes are still going to go up, but our house values are all going to go down because of all the garbage that's going to blow all over this neighborhood. And that's not right. And Chairwoman Ochoa, her answer was, well, well, if garbage blows in your yard, just pick it up like it's no big deal. You know, we got to pick up enough garbage that the garbage men dump all over the road. We don't need to have pick up other people's trash also. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello. I have a letter from my neighbor that wasn't able to make it. I'm sorry, could we get your name, please? Dominique Walmuth. I live on 9970 West Oak Forest Drive. And my neighbor is Petra, and she's at 9990 West Oak Forest Drive. She's literally on the corner of Sheridan and West Oak Forest Drive. And her letter is written September 16th, 2021, to whom it may concern. We, the homeowners of 9990 West Oak Forest Drive, strongly disagree on the opening of a grocery store. If you have any questions, feel free to call us. And then it's signed, Jose and Petra Overa. Um, I was on the first initial Zoom meeting with everybody. And I also attended the last meeting in person. 
Um, I strongly would hope that you would take the time to play the video that Michael took of the establishment on York House and Lewis because they also have um, picnic tables outside of their establishment. And in the last meeting, we talked about that people were utilizing them, bringing their own beverages, alcoholic beverages, because they don't serve alcohol at that store. Um, filming of the video did entail showing of uh, the garbage that was you know, everywhere, beer bottles. Uh, there was these large uh, skits of boxes that were piled up about this high. And in the last meeting, what was a concern to me was the owner um, had another person with him that was representing him to speak for him on his behalf. <clears throat> but a lot of times when we had questions in the last meeting, um, he himself did not answer the questions. Uh, he, he never even spoke. It, it was his person that was with him just went ahead right away and answered for him, which I think was very um, kind of a concern for me because I'm not hearing it firsthand from the business owner himself. Um, and so I really strongly ob object to that. And my background is my father owned a restaurant in Libertyville for um, over 30 years. And so I'm very familiar with the comings and goings of produce and deliveries, snow removal in the winter. Um, we had a fairly large parking lot, employee parking. And it was talked about in the last meeting, how many employees does he have per shift? As far as I remember, he said, which he did not answer himself, it was his person that was with him, said six to eight employees per shift. And there was um, at least two to three shifts per day. Uh, the average of people that I asked last time was how many people on average do you have over the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, uh, average of 300 people on our street, okay? Hours of operation, I also asked, which he did not answer, was 7 a.m. to 10 p.m., Monday through Sunday. That's every single day, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Um, on our road, we also have the bus <coughs> drop-off is on Sheridan Road. It is directly in front of that establishment. It's not in front of the daycare. It's right in front of that establishment. I was told on the last meeting that that's not a concern of uh, theirs because that's, you know, we have to take it up with the school bus program. Um, well, there's several drop-offs per day on Sheridan Road of different grades, high school, little children, you know, middle of the day. And so that's a big concern. Also, someone mentioned our, our road is not wide enough. It is not a proper road. On one side of the parking is, you can only park on one side, which is closest to this establishment. And on the opposite side, which is my house, you're not allowed to park. So when you go back to the establishment that he already has on York House and Lewis, if you play the video, you will see that there's people parking in the grass. They're parking all over the place. They're, the parking lot is full. They're coming, they're going. They're coming, they're going, nonstop. I personally, like somebody else said, I'm totally in favor of having you know something in that building because that would really be helping um, the community to have, rather than an abandoned building, something that's there. But I really don't feel like this is the proper, you know, uh, to have a busy store on such a small street, already congested Sheridan Road. We talked about the snow removal last meeting. Um, and he was going to have somebody come and remove it for him, you know, several times a day. I personally know that that's super challenging to do because A, you're relying on a, another company that already has all these <coughs> other um, places that they need to be and snowplow. My father actually would get up at five in the morning and start snowplowing on a busy Friday or Saturday, you know, when we knew we were gonna get hit with snow. And he had to go out several times a day and do that to our parking lot. And he was the chef. I mean, he was the main chef. 
So when, you, when your guy doesn't show up to, to snow plow your parking lot, you have to do it yourself. Well, he already has two businesses. That's a concern. Where are you going to put the snow? You're going to have it hauled off? Okay. But what if your guy doesn't show up? It's going to end up somewhere, and it's probably going to end up in my driveway. Uh, let's see what else. Pulling out on a Sheridan Road is a challenge just if nobody's parking there. The other day at the daycare, somebody had their car parked slanted facing Sheridan Road, and we have all this construction going on right now. I couldn't even see past that car to know if I could take my right and, you know, a lot of times I have to go left, but that day I would just happen to be going right. I couldn't even see around the car, and that wasn't even in that parking lot. So just if everybody starts parking there, employees, people coming, going, it's going to be so congested. It's going to be so like a nightmare getting in and out of there and causing so much accidents. Um, and I, I think I've pretty much covered everything. Uh, I just really... You know, I'm not opposed to a business, but I just don't think it's a, a good fit for anybody, and I wish him the best of luck, but I think the best thing would be a really very, um, you know, like, like somebody else mentioned, a tax business, you know, something that's not a lot of people coming and going, or just, you know, make it a parking lot and charge us all some money to park there, because we don't have enough parking on our block anyway, and I'd be happy to pay for that, so thank you. Thank you. My name is Adolfo Cornelio, and then I live uh, behind the building, 9957 Oak Forest. And really, is that true what the lady say? When they plow the snow behind my fence, what happened? They leak it and they go to my basement, right? That's why I don't think it's the right thing to put a store over there. Okay, so they bother me so much over there. Thank you. <clears throat> Tony and Goglia, 9914 West Oak Forest. I've been a resident there for 28 years. I've seen the neighborhood change a lot. I don't want to see this change to our neighborhood. My wife and my fa family are all opposed to it. It's just too much traffic, too much high volume. And I'm not going to keep going on all this. I feel the same way as everybody else here that has spoke. Just want to let you know that I'm against it. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. I'm Carl Olson. I live at 9888 Marguerite Lane. And uh, I'm also uh, opposed to it. It's... Uh, same thing, there's too much tra uh, traffic going to be put in there. The one question I would have about it is that the drawing they showed at the last meeting, they had an island going in. And from what I've seen of the island, it looked like they were crowding Oak Forest and making it smaller at the entrance from, from Sheridan Road. Mm. And my question would be is, if that is true, and if it is true, is IDOT going to be notified that that's going to be a change to their entrance coming off of Sheridan Road? That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Hootie Spiller. I live on Oak 9780 Oak Forest. And everyone pretty much covered everything except for the, the pictures that they were showing with the, the blueprints. And then they showed a picture of what's actually there. Although it was a zoom shot, made it look very big. But... Um, the place on York House in Lewis, there's quite a few dumpsters, a grease thing, and a cardboard compactor. And I, I drive a big Ford truck, and I, I take my truck in behind the building where this supposed alley is going to go, because I've been there over 30 years, and there's no alley there. Uh, my truck, you couldn't walk between it and the fence. It's behind the building, so if you just take a, a drive by there, pictures that they're showing with the blueprints versus what's there now, it ain't going to work out. There's no way for dumpsters, oil pits, and all that stuff. And there's just no room. The plowing is just another issue. So, thank you. 
Thank you. Anyone else? All right, well, thank you all for your comments. Um, we will be uh, addressing uh, that particular uh, item later on in our agenda and uh, shortly. And uh, we will uh, then take up our deliberations and discussion on that, but uh, your input is appreciated and welcome. So thank you for that. Um, our next item of business tonight is our consent agenda. Uh, is there anything that the board would have us consider separately? Hearing nothing, I would accept a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Uh, all right, I should list off in my traditional fashion. I didn't. Um, this consent agenda <coughs> includes the following items. The approval of the village board regular meeting minutes from September 9th. Bills presented for payment the amount of $124,360.45. The finance report from August. Community development report from August. And the public safety report from August. Um, and we do have a motion and a second uh, recorded. Yes. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? All right. Roll call, please. Trustee Jensen. Aye. Trustee Miller. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Siddick. Aye. Trustee Wills. Aye. Motion carries. Um, I have a little business to do here tonight. We have uh, first up. Um, I would like to uh, make the appointment for Trustee Addison to join the Intergovernmental Affairs, I want to say Agreement Committee, Affairs Committee, um, headed by uh, Trustee Miller. Um, I am, would make the appointment with the consent and advice of the Village Board, so uh, I would appreciate a motion to that effect. I'll move. We have a motion by Trustee Miller. Second. Second by Trustee Siddick. Any discussion? What are his qualifications? Well, he did offer to uh, <laughs> display those in interpretive dance tonight. If, uh, he if didn't he, wear his tutu tonight. No. He said he was That's having a bit it. of trouble finding a choreographer. Right. But uh, aside from that, I guess we'll, we'll let him off the hook, though. Um, Trusty Otterson uh, said he would be happy to take this appointment, and, uh, and he does tend to make it to the meetings and provide insightful uh, Comments. <clears throat> well, that's setting the bar pretty high. <laughs> do I have to abstain from voting on this one, or by by voting, do I accept the? Uh... I, I think you can vote on this. You one. can vote for yourself. Ah, you can vote for yourself. Yep. Um, It'll be the first time I vote for myself. <laughs> <I'll bet. laughs> All right. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Trustee Miller. Aye. Trustee Addison. Aye. Trustee Siddick. Aye. Trustee Wells. <laughs> Aye. Trustee Jensen. Aye. Motion carries. Congratulations. Yet more work for you to do. Thank you. <laughs> and they are going to be adjusting their meeting times so that I can attend. That's, that's uh, we generous. Haven't, we haven't discussed that. Well, we'll yet. see. We'll see. <laughs> well, if they I want. call you during lunch. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, second up, I have the pleasure of... Um, making an appointment tonight, uh, Mr. Manny Robles, uh, to the Planning Commission. He was referred to me by uh, one of our uh, sitting plan Commission members, um, expressed an interest in uh, serving the village in that capacity. I uh, had the pleasure of meeting with him uh, and discussing the, the role, the time commitments, the, uh, um, the general uh, expectations, if I can say it that way, of a Planning and Zoning Commissioner. And um, he said he was up for the task and willing to take it on. So uh, again, with the advice and consent of the board, I would like to make this appointment. Might I have a motion to that effect? I'll move. I'll second. We have a motion by Trustee Miller, second by Trustee Jensen. Uh, any discussion? Well, we didn't have, uh, a, in, in his case, I kind of know in Mark's case, but this individual, we don't have anything in our packet uh, uh, introducing him. Do you have a brief? You know, I have, I have a, um, a resume, a kind of, just kind of a work resume, but it was more work-based. So, no, I don't have, he lives in uh, Cambridge Subdivision. I'm sorry, I, with the masks on, I can't tell. He's in the back, <laughs> sitting next to my lovely wife. <laughs> um, did you have questions for him? No, I, I'm just, it, just customary to 
we could ask introduce them, candidates. Um, we could ask them to do the interpretive that, dance. Well, that would be that would be nice. Um, I, I, I'm glad that I'm glad that we have two two vacancies now, don't we? On that? Yes, we have another vacancy. It'll be nice to it'll be control. nice to get that that staffed up again. Yes, it would have made the, the the issue that these many of these folks are here for tonight a little yes. bit easier for us to have a, a finding by that uh, commission. So yes. yeah, I'm glad I'm glad we have people willing to do the job. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't want to grill him. I don't want to chase him away. I okay. Just... Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He is in the back. He did wave. Um, <laughs> so, um, any other discussion on that? Well, the uh, fact that he stayed here through this past few minutes means that he must be. Yeah. He well, Kerry's kind of holding him holding down his, there. So stepping on his foot. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, all right. Well, then I would ask the clerk to please call the roll. Trustee Adderson? Aye. Trustee Siddick? Aye. Trustee Wells? Aye. Trustee Judson? Aye. Trustee Miller? Aye. Motion carries. Welcome. <laughs> All right, now we will move into uh, reports from trustees. Uh, we'll start off with the Finance Committee. Trustee Judson, what have you got? Thank you, Mayor. I have very little uh, for you to offer tonight. We had a, a routine uh, Finance Committee meeting, our monthly meeting last night. And with one of our members absent, we probably set a record for brevity. Um, it, was, it was only about 15 minutes. <laughs> our next meeting will be wow. um, will be the uh, 27th of October at 6 p.m. and probably done by 6:15. There you go. So if anyone wants to come, be here on time. That's all I have. Here. Thank you very much. Uh, Trustee Gus is not with us tonight. Uh, does that, is there any report on behalf of Parks and Recreation? Not aware of any. Okay. Uh, then we will move into Planning, Building, and Zoning Committee. Trustee Wells, what have you got for us tonight? Thank you, Your Honor. I have a couple items for your consideration. Um, first is the Planning Commission. The only Board of Appeals held a hearing on September the 2nd of 2021 regarding the petition of Antonio Mendy, uh, DBA, the original Tony's Landscape for a conditional use permit for a contractor storage yard. The existing home would remain and be converted into the office for the business and would not be used for residential purposes in the future. Uh, the existing garage would be demolished and replaced with a large maintenance building and the gravel lot would be paved. The site plan includes the adjacent alley due to the right of way vacation requested by the petitioner that is pending. <coughs> The business would sell plants and trees from the location. The nursery center, which consists of a small sales and display area, accessory to the main yard, is a permitted use. The plan commission recommendation included conditions of approval, which are in the ordinance, and minor revision to the site plan. The site plan has been revised and discussed with the plan commission to add two parking stalls to the custom, customer parking area and clarify the height of the fence. It should be noted that staff has entered, inserted a new condition to address the setback of material bands in the event that the alley is not acquired by the petitioner. Great. Um, can I assume that you are making a motion to I, that effect? That I am. All right. We have a motion by Second. Tr Trustee. Oh, are you going to give me trouble tonight? I'm, gonna, I'm sorry. <laughs> We have a motion by Trustee Wells and a second by Trustee Otterson. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, discussion on this uh, motion. <clears throat> this site has been used um, uh, more or less in the capacity that's being requested over the years. Um, uh, it's been encouraged that he formalize, uh, in fact, uh, there were several actions taken over the years, code enforcement actions, and that. Um, it's, it's good to see that there's a, a formal decision made to go ahead and, and get the property zoned properly. Uh, I like the idea of a retail sales component uh, on Green Bay Road, of course, and uh, a, a new uh, uh, garage building would be certainly a benefit to uh, the area as well. So, um, any other comments besides? Uh, I just had a few questions for him regarding the intended use. Um, <clears throat> per the hearing minutes, 
<clears throat> I understand that mowing is not a service that is provided by this uh, operation. I'm um, just curious as to what the full scope of services that are intended to be provided. Yeah, please, please. <clears throat> Okay. Could I, excuse me, just a so, moment. Um, yeah. Technically, we should uh, uh, swear in your, your testimony tonight. So <laughs> if we could, um, would you do the other? Sure. Uh, well, or should we have the clerk? Yeah, it, it, I don't know if it should be the clerk or you, so. Well, I, all right. Uh, I mean, I, I could, <laughs> it's, it's the, 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 Okay, all right, I wasn't, yeah, yeah. okay. All right, uh, I, what I'm gonna do is swear you both. So if you'd raise your right hand. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Thank you, please go ahead. Okay. Um, so uh, to answer your question, on behalf of Mr. Arismandi, um, the, 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 the type of work that he does is anything from cutting trees to planting trees um, to, you know, re, um, reinstalling, reconfiguring, like, landscapes of, of businesses, homes, things okay. like that. So not a lawn um, service per se? Uh, it's a, yeah, it's a little bit more... Uh, industrial, I guess, than, yeah. than, than just cutting grass, yeah. And I believe to um, what uh, President Wells was referring to uh, from the previous meeting was the uh, the fact that the uh, yard trimmings are uh, mm. not a part of something that uh, Mr. Arzmani's work does, which is uh, factory. Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, is retail sale of plants and trees proposed? Put aside on all the planning that you have that primarily for the business use. I'm sorry? Is retail sales of plant and trees proposed at this site for retail? Or the <coughs> trees and plants that you have that primarily for the use of the, uh, lo, for the lo, business? Sure. Uh, los, los árboles que uh, usted quiere uh, poner ahí, pues para los edificios, sí. Uh, es para vender al público o, o para... Okay. He's a, uh, uh, primarily for uh, the use of his company to, to plant. Okay. Is what the uh, the answer to that is. Um, and then also, I don't know if it was mentioned in the report, but uh, uh, also the sale of, of firewood is uh, is something that he's uh, looking to be able to do out of the that property. The primary. Contractor storage equipment, um, firewood sales. Yes, sir. Firewood. And the planning will be used in the commission of its business. No retail. Uh, yeah, re retail the sale of firewood and uh, plants, things like that. It would be selling plants. Yes. To yeah. the public retail. Public, yeah. Okay. Uh, by the public, uh, public, yeah, yes. Um. <clears throat> Will there be any processing of firewood on the site? The firewood is primarily processed off-site and then brought in as already cut uh, firewood, not as logs, but perhaps some uh, processing, but very minimal. How about mulch? Will there be processing mulch on the site? Processing uh, mulch. Mulch, uh, va procesar <coughs> mulch? No, no processing of mulch. Okay, that. That concludes my question. Thank you. Okay. Were there any other questions? I just had one that's kind of more <coughs> for our, perhaps for our attorney or, or uh, Andrew. Under on page three of this uh, ordinance uh, six decimal nine, where we uh, it restricts the the uh, 
condition use permit to this individual or this this petitioner um, we don't specify that the, the type of business whether the business if, if the if the nature of the business changes would that then void the the permit as would change of ownership so we, we're not restricting it necessarily not in the the description of the ordinance is pretty general just uh, contractors equipment storage yards <coughs> it isn't very specific with, with respect to the nature of the business except for storing storing of equipment well, what I would say to that is the conditional use is, it is specific to a type of business. And this type of business was described at length in testimony before the plan, plan commission, as well as now you've heard it here tonight. Uh, I, I, I think it is tied to the kind of business that they have there. And to the extent the business changes in nature, it's going to need a, perhaps a different conditional use permit. Um, to, to change the, the type of business. Well, I would just be concerned yeah. about about an, an evolutionary change where it, a gradual, uh, and, and, and I don't know these individual <coughs> people or their business history, but I've seen that happen with other businesses where the market changes, the business changes, and suddenly over time you develop a new, a completely new business. Well, I, I think the remedy there would be that uh, the village uh, cites the individual for a violation of the conditional use permit uh, and, and conducts a hearing to determine whether or not the business is still uh, the, the same business that uh, uh, was entitled to the conditional use permit if granted tonight. Uh, you can revoke a conditional <laughs> use permit with a hearing if there's a violation of the underlying permit. And that would be the remedy if that were to occur. Uh, I, I would say that it, it would have to be a pretty drastic change. Uh, I, I don't think you're talking about regulating you know the the day-to-day -day, uh, I, I just want to be sure I'm understanding no no in, in, question. in my experience with these things in the past has been they were generally more specific and this one is, is kind of a broad category mm -hmm. and and they have a lot of different functions under this under this business that they're that they're applying to um, and I was just curious as to how restrictive this language should be or, mm -hmm. or how broad it should be now, Andrew, anything further to add to that? Yeah, the the ordinance does specifically reference the plans. Uh, the plans indicate the type the types of uh, activities that be conducted on the site. The material storage bins are labeled uh, with certain uh, with certain materials. The firewood area is labeled. Uh, the yard area is labeled. Um, and then, as uh, uh, Attorney Farrell just said, the the testimony does specify how he plans to operate, and all of that uh, would be enforceable. Yeah, I read all that in, and it's your reserve right to respect, so that's, that's good to have. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I have a couple of questions. Sure. Um, referencing some of the items on page three under section six, section six, uh, uh, number four, it talks about the yard should be kept clean and organized with inoperable vehicles or obsolete equipment removed. That implies that there are some inoperable vehicles and obsolete equipment now on the premises. The, the intention was not to imply that there are existing vehicles that need to be removed. It's just in the event that he uh, has a vehicle that does become inoperable, it would need to be removed. Okay. And then my other question is at number eight about uh, in the event that the petitioner fails to acquire the unimproved alley, the material bins will be shifted 10 feet to the west. Um, how long? Do we give him to make up his mind about that? The vacation of the alley uh, is actually on tonight's agenda. Uh, I don't believe that, uh, as it's written, has a uh, clock in it. Uh, there's no, uh, in that uh, uh, vacation <coughs> ordinance, there is no 30, 60 day period. Um, but he has indicated that he does intend to pay the, uh, the required amount. Okay. okay. Thank you. you can add a time limit if you wish to amend the ordinance tonight and, uh, to add a time limit to acquire. That's well, that's an option. I think that might make sense. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, what's the impetus to do it? Right. Well, the impetus would be he wouldn't be able to use his existing site plan. He would lose that that amount of space that he's currently planning on having, and he would lose that when it came to placing his bins <coughs> and, and the like. So, um, it's not. I guess I would say it's not. A, a, a deal breaker if he didn't accept it we're not we're not taking away functionality from the site we're just making it smaller 
the setback of the material storage bins uh, would not comply with the zoning code, so he would just need to shift them over. That was not part of the code relief associated with the conditional use, so that yep. was the reason for that condition. There, there's one element on his uh, his site plan that's too close to the property line if he doesn't acquire the alley. Understood. Okay. Uh, just a, a question, a clarification then, is uh, is it the intent of the uh, petitioner to acquire the alleyway, assuming that the village board vo votes tonight to uh, uh, vacate that alleyway? Okay. Okay. And is this something that he would do immediately, or is there a, a delay? Okay. Uh, would you? Well, I, I guess I asked the attorney, what's your recommendation? Like I think six months. I, I would add six months time you. limit. Okay. okay. All right. So we have uh, we have a motion on the floor, correct? Yes. And we have the motion maker was Trustee Wells. And so, Trustee Wells, uh, it's been requested that you would amend your motion to add a six-month time limit for the petitioner to acquire the alley assuming that the village board agrees to and we can't hold him to something we don't agree to <laughs> so this is the this is the kind of the circular uh, motion of, uh, here but if uh, assuming the board agrees tonight to vacate the alley uh, would you agree to amend your motion for that six month time so period? Moved. all right and the seconder was Addison. trustee Addison do you agree to the I do agree to that amended thank you uh, all right um, other discussion? Just curiosity, it doesn't uh, pertain to the, uh, the situation. Where you process the firewood, is that the site out on 173 and, and Delaney? The, the site in question. No, 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 no. But, but you said you process the firewood elsewhere and you would bring it to this location to sell it. Is that, is that yes. your other location? Is that? Uh, okay, yes, that's sir. the. I think I saw the same sign, Tony's oh, firewood, Tony's yeah. firewood or landscaping. Yeah. So I, I was just curious. That was the same. And then the the comment about the inoperable vehicles; those those can be moved into the new garage, right? They don't have to be removed from the site if that's yeah. So the way it's worded says removed, but you can you, it, it, they can be put inside yeah. the structure, correct? Yeah. I, I think that would be accurate. We don't we don't ma um, legislate what is inside the building. I would say that's correct. If he does have a vehicle that he's trying to harvest the parts from, yeah. as long as he kept it uh, within the enclosed structure for that purpose, I, I don't think we would enforce that. No. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, one more time. Anything? Anyone else? All right. Um, I would ask the clerk to please call the roll. Trustee City. Aye. Trustee Wells? Nay. <coughs> Trustee Jensen? Aye. Trustee Miller? Aye. Trustee Addison? Aye. All right, the motion does carry. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, Trustee Wells, please proceed. Next, next we have <coughs> Planning Commission Zoning Board of Appeals held several hearings regarding the petition of Ruben Hernandez doing business as the Metro Commons and Nita Grocery for a planned unit development to allow for the redevelopment of existing vacant building at 38835 North Sheridan Road as a grocery store with carry-out food service. The plan was revised after an initial submittal to remove an addition at the north end of the building and reconfigured to access from Oak Forest to increase the separation from Sheridan Road. As a result of the revision, the code relief associated with the petition was reduced. <clears throat> Excuse me, I, I, I have to ask you to please hold your conversation. Um, we, we, with masks, with uh, a trustee who's barely got a voice left, um, it's difficult to hear. Uh, concentration is on, on all of us here, and he's, he's doing, uh, uh, he told me tonight, I hope you can hear me tonight because I'm hoarse. And so, um, maybe Larry, if you could just slow your your cadence a bit, so uh, we could try to okay. keep up with you. Thank you. The petitioner proposed to construct 
the north half of the unapproved alley to the east of the building <coughs> and to utilize it for access to customer parking, employee parking, loading, and trash collection. Discussion at the September 2nd Plan Commission hearing focused on traffic concerns and litter control. The commission made a motion that included several conditions of approval. However, the motion failed with a, a tie vote, 2-2 two, two with one absent, two vacancies. As there were no specific findings made against the petition by the plan commission, staff prepared an ordinance for the board's consideration containing the staff recommendation that were presented during the hearing. Plan and Commission discussed additional conditions that have been included in the <coughs> ordinance and consists of the following. Require cardboard to be kept within the designated container with more frequent pickups scheduled if needed. Number two, prohibit outdoor seating in order to address evidence of litter near picnic tables which were present, presented in the video of the Waukegan location. They have also added the list of cold relief in section five to include the rear east setback reduction from 12 to 10 feet <coughs> that was noted in the report, but inadvertently omitted from the draft motion made by the plan commission. <coughs> it should be noted that the findings of facts, exhibit A of the ordinance have been formally adopted in the absence of, of finding a fact for or against the petition by plan commission, the board would be making the finding through the approval of the ordinance. The board may wish to ask additional questions of the petition and modify the findings as needed. <coughs> and I entertain that in the form of a motion. Thank you. You made it through that, Larry, and I appreciate your, uh, your diligence there. We have a motion on the floor uh, regarding the uh, ordinance granting preliminary and final approval of planned unit development to facilitate the establishment of a grocery store with carryout food services in the Sheridan Road Corridor Overlay District B1 underlying zoning for La Mexicanita Grocery at 38835 North Sheridan Road. Do we have a second? I'll second that more. We have a second by Trustee Jensen. Um, by way of explanation to any and all listening, in the absence of a finding by the plan commission, a recommendation by the plan commission uh, that automatically falls to the village board. Uh, what happened at the plan commission meeting is we had four uh, plan commissioners in attendance. As you heard earlier, we had two vacancies at that time. Um, so uh, in an ideal situation, you would never have an even number of people voting on anything. Um, but there it was. Um, we had one absent, two vacant, total of seven, and, and we, didn't, uh, we didn't get a, a ruling or, or a, a recommendation. So that information from the, that, uh, the, the series of hearings and discussions, we have summarized in minutes. We have summaries of uh, comments from all the people that attended, um, all the different hearings. Um, we have the names, the addresses, and the comments uh, summarized for everyone that, every one of you that came to those meetings. And um, we had uh, the opportunity to hear you tonight. I promised earlier that I would pull the board and, and find out if they are interested in watching the videos that were taken. And I would do that at this time. Um, those in favor, please uh, show hands. We got three, four, five, okay. Um, if you would, please. <clears throat> and I apologize, our screens are positioned for the best for all of us, so uh, I they, hope that you're able do to. Do they tilt? They do. No. Um, we, they can, we can try to get a little bit of an angle. Fall too. But I, I think most of the people here have seen them already, but, uh, but the board, this is primarily for the board's uh, benefit. <clears throat>
the 27th of July. And I am at the Mexican grocery store that wants to open another one in each park. And there is just glitter everywhere. And across the street in the neighbor's yard is just This is on my way to work, where I look at every day, and I do not want to come to my house, my neighborhood. As you can see, even more garbage. He doesn't bother to keep his business clean. Is that him? Yeah, no. All right. Thank you for sharing that. One of our, um, one of the things that was brought up earlier was that um, one of the uh, residents was concerned on why this has made it this far. 
Um, there is something that uh, we, we hold very near and dear, and that's due process. Um, the law of the land, uh, the ordinances of the village say that uh, anyone has the right to petition the village for uh, zoning relief, for uh, planned developments, um, you name it. Um, the, the mistake many people often make is that there's a presumption that because it makes it into the hearing process that, um, that, that there's an automatic um, acceptance or, or, or um, desire for something to proceed. And I just want to be clear, I'm not going to prejudice one way or the other on this particular situation, but um, by the, the very fact that the application is filed, the fees are paid, that person is entitled to their, their hearing and they're entitled to a resolution to that request. Um, for the village to just, at the staff level, turn something down, or at the plan commission level to just unilaterally have the authority to um, take an action that would prevent someone from um, legitimate use of their land would be improper. Uh, that's why we have the board here tonight. Um, that's our ultimately our responsibility. So as we deliberate on this, uh, keep in mind that um, staff does staff's job. They, they forward um, information to the plan commission and to the board. They don't necessarily take an opinion. In fact, you'll have a hard time getting a opinion out of staff in, this, in the sense of whether something should or shouldn't happen. They might guide a petitioner in their application process to try to head off um, certain problems that um, there, there might be knowledge about. But beyond that, the staff would do their level best to forward a petition to the board uh, through the plan commission so that we can get to this point where we're at today. Number two, um, as part of that due process is hearing uh, citizen concerns. And, and um, so I do thank you all for coming. Um, we do not generally have a room full of people at our board meetings. Uh, typically, I'm waving at my wife in the back all by herself. So um, I do appreciate uh, that we have some citizen interest here tonight. <coughs> that being said, excuse me, <coughs> we have before us um, this particular topic. Um, since we have a motion and a second in front of us, uh, uh, one, one thing we're not doing here is conducting a hearing. Um, the hearing was at the plan commission level, and as I explained, we do have the minutes of those hearings. We do have the um, uh, sworn testimony uh, that came through those hearings. So we're not going to repeat that process necessarily, although we may be looking for clarification um, in, in, that, uh, in that sense. Um, so I, I would presume that we're going to have questions of the petitioner. Is that a fair assumption um, from board members? Okay. Uh, is the petitioner here tonight? Um, I would ask that you'd come up to the podium, please. <clears throat> For the record, could we have your name and... Um, Ruben Hernandez. And your and your position in this? Are are yeah. you the property owner? The owner. Yes. The property. Okay. Um, who have you got with you tonight? It's uh, I don't know, speak English for the guy. Yes, yes. Uh, my name is Eugene. My name is Eugene Demian Chuk, and I, uh, as a courtesy to my client, I sell him equipment. I'm in charge of installing his stores. I basically uh, translate the conversations that we had previously. So it's not like a, I'm providing my opinions, but simply I'm providing the conversations that we have previously about all the any of the questions that arise. Okay, so you'll you'll be interpreting for him if there Basically. are questions and okay, thank you. I'm the architect yeah. is here. Uh, John Pekarnan from RRP Architects and I have developed the plans for Ruben and Eugene. Thank you. Always nice to know who's standing before us. All right. Um, we'll we'll start off with uh, any particular Oh, I, yeah, I guess we should swear you on. Thank you. I have an attorney next to me for a reason. <laughs> Raise your right hands. Do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. All right. 
Thank you. And if I may, for the, for the translating, can, can you do your best to translate? If a question is specifically asked of the owner, please translate that question to the owner, translate back his answer to the board. Sure. Thank you. It, it's easy to kind of fall into a habit of trying to answer quickly, yeah. uh, but, but take the time to do that, please. Sure. Okay. All right. Um, I'll let any board member that wishes to step out. All right. Trustee Adderson? I don't know about stepping out, but... I'll speak up. Um, I, I had a question. We were talking about um, the, the previous issue we were looking at, the, the um, a conditional use permit. We were talking about enforcement, right, of some of the, some of the issues mm -hmm. um, brought up for that property. Uh, the concerns with the, the trash blowing um, and other things like that, there's, uh, with they, they've committed, to, uh, according to their testimony, committed to the snow removal company to move snow off the site if it gets to pile up and and um, I believe it was in the architects uh, summary there was a statement that the manager in charge would be policing the parking lot every other hour looking for garbage is that is that still the intention do we have anything since it is a conditional use permit if we find those things to be a problem would that fall on just a regular uh, uh, code enforcement or would that be something that could the conditional use could be revoked uh, in a hearing if if uh, that were to be a problem it would begin uh, it would begin with con uh, typical code enforcement procedures um, if staff felt that there was a significant issue a repetitive nature uh, we could make a suggestion on revocation and there's a procedure in the code for that okay um, so the other thing, you know, related to the garbage and on the video, obviously that's not acceptable. Um, the way the the garbage is blowing around, I'm very familiar with that. I live across from McDonald's, mm -hmm. and I picked up many a French fry containers uh, through the years because of that, for the very same reason. Um, the the garbage enclosure, it looks like behind that building at one time there was some kind of an enclosure, but it's no longer containing the dumpsters. Uh, we require a, a dumpster enclosure, and is that something also under the conditional use that if that were not to be maintained properly and the garbage kept out of out of sight, that would be a violation, a code enforcement violation? It, could, it would be both. Uh, they would not be uh, in compliance with the, the plans associated with the PUD, and it would be a code enforcement issue. Okay. All right. I just, I had one other just one other comment we're talking about parking spaces obviously that's we would like there to be three times as many parking spaces available there but um, in doing some comparison I, I know we're not considering the Waukegan site right here and I and I I'm a little uncomfortable with as much as we're talking about the Waukegan site um, but it does pertain the the building at the Waukegan store is approximately 9900 square feet and they have, uh, I think the total is 39 parking spaces, and, and it's somewhat crowded over there. That works out to be 250, one parking spot per 255 square feet in the building. The, the beach park location, the building is 3,200 square feet with 22 spaces available, which is a rate of uh, one space per 145 square feet so I I've kind of taking that into consideration comparatively with the Waukegan store uh, the amount of traffic this this building is a third of the size of that store and it will have more parking spaces per square foot of the building so that kind of put into perspective a little bit uh, some of the congestion in the, the parking lot itself in my mind and just one last thing, was there a, the, there was a lot of talk about a revised the photometric uh, the lighting plan. Has that been received? That has not been received. It is a suggested condition of approval. Uh, the original photometric plan uh, included an addition to right. the building that's no longer a part of the application. So uh, the staff suggestion on that was that the photometric plan be revised to remove the addition from it and just... Uh, at, at permit, should this be approved, um, they would need to verify that the lighting meets the code. 
So from from the, I am assuming you as the architect had something to do with that. Yes, our someone engineer, understand. Uh, performed. Well, engineer. I had someone perform the okay. photometric, and we can easily <coughs> resubmit a new photometric with the with any of the plans we submit for any permits. But I believe that the intent there is just to show that the lighting on the building isn't going to be spilling over onto the adjoining properties and lighting everything up. Right? Is that? That's correct. So with the addition being removed, the, the location of the light fixtures obviously would be in different locations. So I'd like to just make sure that. Uh, yeah, that that is uh, that is listed in the uh, ordinance as a condition. As a condition. Yep. Okay. Not a condition of approval tonight, but as a condition of permitting. Permitting. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank. I don't have any question. Uh, further questions right now. Thank you. I want to follow up on, on one that Mark asked, and, and that is with respect to um, revocation. Should should the petitioner not follow through on his commitments here tonight, and it's granted, um, in a practical sense, I, I, I wonder what revocation would look like. There's not there's not a lot being done. I mean, they wouldn't be removing the landscaping and that sort of thing. So I'm wondering what that would look like if that were to come to pass in the future. Uh, well, it's a hearing. It's well, no, I, I mean, but the, the, sure. the actual mechanics of what are we revoking? Because this is a, as I read, read this thing, it's a use by right in this zone, this this uh, store, without the without the uh, relief that they've asked for. The, the plan unit development is actually a form of conditional use. It is not a permitted use. It's it, to, in order to get this approved, they will. Or, have right, to but it a, a store. If, if I'm reading the, the, the notes from staff correctly, right. a store is a permitted use without any consideration for conditional. That is correct. If there, were, if there was not additional relief sought in the form of variations, which we have here, uh, and they simply came and asked, uh, or they, they wanted to establish a grocery store, that is a permitted use as a right. So revocation would, would just re revert back to the original zoning, would it not? Revocation, they need, oh, the a conditional plan unit, use. they need a plan unit development in order to get the multiple variations. I understand. Yes, sir. I understand. Yep. If if it, if the condition of use permit were revoked at some time in the future, in a practical sense, what would that mean? They'd still have a, a, a right to have a grocery store there. They'd have a right to have a grocery store without any variations. Correct. So Understood. they would have to change the nature of the operation. The site plan would have to change. Uh, the variations that have been granted. The, uh, the cooler, for instance, they would, that they encroachment. Would. But there, it, it looks to me like there'd be minimal changes once the, once the Islands built, the sidewalks in, the landscaping's done. There's, there's not the, the teeth in, that we'd have would really be more code enforcement than revocation of the condition use permit. Provided they were, were able to manage to operate the store without the variations, they could continue to operate uh, without a conditional use permit. Okay. So it would change the nature of what's right. Well, I understand. I, I, I'm just. I hope it. Sure. Should this get approved, it never comes to that. Yeah, I understand. I'm just, we're looking at having seen the video. I, I can see where we might someday end up with some code enforcement issues. Mm -hmm. Definitely. That's all I have. I had a, a question for the uh, petitioner. Um, after viewing the video tonight um, and being intimately familiar with the property myself, uh, as having a business down the street, um, what's the <coughs> petitioner's response to the video that we saw tonight? I'm sorry. Um, could we have the response, please? Sure. Okay. The response is uh, like uh, the. I'm sorry if I give your title wrong. Are you a trustee or you? Yes. Are? Yeah. Okay. Like the trustee stated, uh, you know, we are talking about two different size, and it's even more if we take in consideration the bakery next to the. The store in Waukegan is even more square footage. It's a lot more activity, and we are we are talking about 
something a little bit more complicated to manage. Although uh, Mr. Hernandez is uh, taking measures to improve his situation in, in your house, but certainly in this new location, which proportionally is less than one third, if we take the bakery and the other store together, uh, he will comply with all the rules that are being demanded to be complied. You know, inclusion, including the garbage enclosure, including the monitoring of the garbage, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, to comply with all the code rules and all the requirements to be able to open the grocery store. Of course, okay. And uh, one, one follow-up question. Um, has he been cited by City of Waukegan code enforcement for any violations on the property? No, he does not. Okay. Um, the, the reasoning and the rationale for my questions um, is that um, lacking enforcement, um, you get what you get. And uh, Waukegan is not, has not ever enforced parking over there. Um, they, they are using the side yard for parking. Um, there's a, it's a high traffic situation. And there's, I've watched trucks, semi trucks, pull down the side of the street there with no place to go. Um, he's making uh, statements in, in testimony here that um, he would have deliveries by much smaller vehicles, uh, and that's fine. Oh, I guess what I'm saying is lacking enforcement, whether it be parking enforcement, whether it be uh, trash uh, enforcement. I mean, the city of Waukegan made me build an enclosure for my dumpster. He's got a similar enclosure, um, but the container's not in the enclosure. Um, there's a lot of debris stacked outside. I've, I was told that that would not be a permissible thing um, two blocks away. Um, and so I've had to, to toe the line there, but um, I will say that uh, if code enforcement is not um, on it, then it gets ignored. And uh, that may not be the sign of a good business person, but it is the reality I think that we're seeing over there. Um, I will say this, and, and uh, promises are empty promises, but I think you'll find that Beach Park has a mm, little bit more aggressive stance on code enforcement as it comes to businesses, um, maybe a lot more aggressive stance. Um, I, I know that we all have our shortcomings and we uh, everyone has their desires um, as far as traffic, as far as parking, um, and that we're, we can't be everywhere every day. But um, I, I, I would like to believe, and I think it's a fair um, thing to say, that our, our code enforcement is much more focused um, than um, obviously what we're seeing here in the city of Waukegan. Not by way of endorsement, just by observation. So um, again, willing to hear from any other trustees, any questions for the petitioner or clarifications? Yeah, that was uh, one of the concerns that I had. And from the petitioner, what will you do different to a potential Beach Park store compared to your Waukegan store as far as your garbage issues? saying is first of all you know reiterate the fact that this is a much smaller operation and he's going to be much more aggressive in the monitoring of the of the conditions of the parking lot and make sure that if it's any need for further uh, further action uh, he will he will take the necessary measure he's fully aware that if he doesn't respect the code, he has plenty of people around that will make sure the code is enforced. Not just the, the not just Beach Park, but obviously all the neighbors around his place. So he's fully aware that if he uh, takes uh, action to 
continue with this venture, he will have to be in total, com uh, comply totally with code and whatever else is requi requested for by, by Beach Park. There's not any question about it. And I was also wondering, um, you know, under one of the findings, you know, this development does meet, meet the standards that are listed, but I was just curious um, with the relief that you were asking for, for the extension, a two-foot extension on a cooler slash freezer, um, the two extra feet was needed because. Okay. Well, I mean, because of the size of the, the particular store, which is very limited, he, he, he needs that particular storage for storage purposes, for, you know, for merchandise. That's the reason. That's the reason of needing a walking cooler and walking freezer. Mm -hmm. Period. Okay, and the last thing I just uh, was concerned about was the traffic flow and I do agree with the residents um, I've seen um, you know high traffic volume at the current store um, I was wondering about the alleyway in the back I, I know there has not been any type of traffic study or anything like that um, I'm just wondering what could possibly be done to help with some sort of traffic flow you know, ingress, egress, traffic going one way, I certainly would not want to see your clientele parked on Oak Forest or Marguerite to take away any potential parking from the people that live on those streets. I think that answer will be better, will be better answered by the architect as far as the uh, I guess in, in regards to the parking, obviously uh, we had did have some early plans where we thought maybe we, we could have some street parking, but I don't think that that's going to be an option now. Mm -hmm. We keep refining uh, the, the plan, obviously, to um, to try and meet any of the residents' concerns as, as well as functionality. It is a, it's a small site, mm -hmm. uh, and I get, I get the residents' concerns about uh, the traffic, um, but, you know, I, I guess that's, you know, he, you know, Ruben can only do so much as far as the way people are going to to drive and speed, um, but there definitely will be an increase in traffic. Um, I, I don't think there's a, a way to get around that. I think that's what you kind of want when you build a store is a, a place where people drive by and will stop in. So that's, but I would definitely think that they would have uh, post some no parking signs on that street, at, or at least near the restaurant there. Mm -hmm. signage or something I mean I, I would I would actually have liked to have seen a traffic study of some sort to see how, how this would impact that's all thank, thank you. you other comments yeah, I, I, have a sure. um, I know there's been mentioned about the alley the un unimproved right away that's behind the restaurant and that the petitioner is interested in constructing possibly the north half uh, correct. Yes, Andrew and zoning planning and zoning have kind of approached us about doing that work uh, to improve the, the traffic flow, so that the people wouldn't, you know, have to go back into the the neighborhoods. Um, and we are, you know, we haven't moved forward with that yet, obviously, because we haven't gotten approval. But it's, it's something that that Ruben I know has said he would, you know, work with the city. To, to help improve that alley all the way through from Michigan to uh, Oak Forest. Okay, good. And one thing, I didn't see anything in the documentation. I believe there is something in our ordinance about a privacy fence for the resident to directly to the east behind the business. I think there is some requirement that a business construct a privacy fence to screen from the most the most adjacent resident? Yeah, it's a question of interpretation. When I was um, viewing, reviewing the plans, the, uh, the development does not directly abut a residential property. There is a public right of way in between. Uh, mm -hmm. So they certainly could have requested that as part of the code relief. 
Uh, but it was my interpretation as I was reviewing their plan that there, there was a public right of way separating them from uh, the adjoining property. Sir, I'm, I'm sorry, we're, we're not taking, uh, we, we had our comment period already, and this is, this is our deliberate. Uh, I, I understand. There is no alley there. There isn't, no, no, you're, you're incorrect, sir. No, sir, sir, please, you're out of line. There is an alley there. There's a dedicated village. No, excuse me, sir, excuse me. There is a dedicated right of way. It is unimproved. We're talking about the improvements to the dedicated right of way. Please do not interrupt. Thank you. Um, if we could continue then. Did you have your questions? Yeah, I, I would like to see something added to the petition that has to do with a privacy fence person. I'd like to see that to protect that resident if this passes. I know we have done that at another business in the village, and that would be Emily's restaurant. There's an alley behind the restaurant and to protect that resident's property value. Is there not an existing <coughs> right. privacy fence there? Sorry, I'm not sure if I'm on it. There, there is an existing fence on that property, on the residential property to the east. There's a privacy fence on the west side adjacent to the alley. So any additional fencing would be right up to that fence? If it, it would have to be on the far side of the alley. It, I suppose it depends on what the, the condition is that was being suggested. But yes, there's an existing fence there. Anything. Um, in addition to that would be a, a second fence. Yeah. Uh, so, so if the alley was improved all the way though, the unimproved right away. Then if it was improved all the way to uh, Michigan, Michigan Avenue, Michigan, yeah. then the residence to the east of the daycare is the one you're referring to? Okay, I'm, I'm not familiar with, I didn't look over there as to that. Um, that would have been an issue to address with Lee's daycare. Mm -hmm back when they did their improvement. Okay. Um, but it's certainly something we can look at if, if there are improvements that continue through yeah, there. Yeah, well, I, my concern is for that, the people right behind the business. And yeah. It's screened appropriately according to the Understood. All right, and if I could add another comment onto that, would that be at the cost of the petitioner? And is there a height limit on some sort of our zoning a privacy ordinance calls fence. for a six-foot maximum height for screening. Mm -hmm. I think there's some provisions that might allow higher in certain situations, but I'm not sure this would be one of them. I just recall the uh, near the mini mart that was on Sheridan and York House, and they, I, I believe theirs was. I think we approved something a little higher just because of the headlights from cars mm. in and out. That's quite a few years ago, but. But again, would that be at the cost of the petitioner? If it was adjacent to the property, if, if uh, for example, the, the, uh, either the ordinance required or the conditional use permit required uh, fence be installed, that would be at the cost of the petitioner behind the petitioner's property. In other words, we'd be saying you need to screen your property or your, your, the, the neighboring view of your property. Um, as Trustee Miller was addressing uh, a separate parcel to the south, um, that wouldn't necessarily automatically happen and it probably would not be at the petitioner's request. There, that would go beyond their, their uh, requirements, if I could say it that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I also wondered about uh, the, the easement uh, behind if that were to pass, you know, because again, I'm going back to an actual traffic flow because the way that I'm, I'm seeing it, and I could be wrong, uh, for deliveries and things like that, that would be a back-end situation versus doing something on that easement to be able to travel in a direction all the way around the building? There would be a logic there, uh, you're correct. You know, backing in, backing out is always a, a Mm -hmm. less desirable path than uh, being able to drive straight through. Has staff addressed the question of the south half of that at block alley, uh, alley block, if I could say it that way? We've, we've addressed it to, uh, uh, in discussions with the petitioner that there's a potential that it is a public right of way. So um, the, the village could, although it is uh, currently green, the village uh, could uh, finish the rest of that uh, public right-of-way at its discretion. 
Yeah. And it might be preferable to have that uh, traffic flow. That you know, we're, mm -hmm. we're balancing again neighborhood needs versus safety versus right. um, you know all the rest. So. Um, yeah, I think that's something that um, maybe more to come on that um, as far as the traffic flow goes. Uh, that, again, it's not directly adjacent to the petitioner's property, but certainly uh, has the potential to be improved as an alleyway. That's why well, it's Mary, I think that was not addressed here in our, I'm looking at page one of the ordinance under the whereas is third from the bottom, village intends to pave the, remaining, the remainder of the alley subject to approval. Yeah, that and, and that is the, that is, we've had conversations to that effect, and, and thank you for pointing out the whereas. Um, that it, it only makes sense mm -hmm. um, in the sense that, you know, it, it would improve traffic flow and safety. Um, I had forgot that we had the whereas in there. You read everything. Thank you. Yeah, I just have one further comment. You guys do this to me on purpose. <laughs> 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 it's a, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is it pointed? Yeah. Did you kick it? I am. Um, just one thing to the uh, petitioner: it would behoove him and his employees to help educate the customers to this pass about the rules that each park has about parking on, on uh, residential streets. Um, customers to this pass. I mean, to keep saying that would probably be expecting a lot of flexibility because they may have used the flexibility at the other location. Um, but the more they could be educated about how each park enforces things, the more they can avoid getting a ticket with the equal fine. And I'm sure no one back to the customer. Okay. Sure. You want me to answer? Please. Uh, yeah. Okay. yeah, to explain uh, it. Yep. Uh, he certainly will inform with signs to all his customers what is permitted, what is not, and try to make sure they comply with that request to avoid any further problems for everybody, inclu including tickets to his customers. Okay, thank you. Just Larry? I'm glad to hear that the uh, petitioner is willing to work with the village to, if this is passed, to work with the village to put the alley all the way through, to relieve some of the potential traffic concerns in and about the area. Um, do have a question in the interim. The, on the plan, it shows new, new asphalt. <clears throat> Will that asphalt be installed? Per, uh, in compliance with the village payment specs. You're talking about in the alleyway? Yes. Yes. Yeah, that would be, they would have to submit engineer drawings uh, and everything else to get approval before they could actually improve the alleyway. Okay. Um, How would the, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You, you just brought up something that just came to mind on what you just mentioned. Would that be something pending if this were to pass that until these plans were put forward for approval before this were? Certainly. All site development, um, landscaping, um, uh, building improvements, all of that have to still go through the building permitting process and, and the public right-of-way improvement process, bonds, uh, all the rest. So um, we're just at the, at the very tip of this iceberg, if I could say it that way. From the uh, entitlement side of things is once they would receive permission from a board such as ours, then the real work starts. Then they've got to prove up all their engineering, all their architectural, all their other work, and get the permits reviewed and issued before they can drive the first nail or um, put the first square foot of pavement down, plant the bushes, whatever. Thank you, Mayor Harper. Thank you, Trustee Wells. Go ahead, Larry. Sorry. One other thing that, uh, as the uh, residents have concern about traffic flow issues, um, we've got an area where we've got two-way traffic intersecting with one-way traffic 
on the site circulation. Um, I think it's very important that we make sure that they install upright directional uh, traffic flow signals and aids <coughs> and maintain them so that we can maintain an orderly traffic flow condition in and about the site. Yep. And again, maintaining is important. Yep. Not only installing, but maintaining. Exactly. Um, yeah, the, I did hear, if I might, um, <coughs> some comments about the, uh, uh, the other site in Waukegan where uh, the county required, we call it a pork chop, the right in, right out um, curbs. And there used to be a no left turn sign in the middle of the pork chop, but it kept getting run over um, by people turning left. Um, I've been there. I've watched it happen. I've watched people drive. They call those mountable curbs, but um, if, you're, if you're pulling in there at 20 miles an hour, um, you probably need new wheels. Um, but it, it, it happens every day. And it, I, I happen to be one that doesn't completely understand the logic of the pork chop. Um, we have one at Speedway. We have two at Speedway. And I watch people turn left and mm -hmm. right, uh, uh, turn left out and left in, right over the top of that, delivery trucks. Um, so I don't know what's better. Honestly, I'm no traffic engineer. I don't know what's better. All I know is people do what people do, and mm, there's not a lot of logic to it. So I think um, some of this was a setup from the beginning for the, for the people trying to get in and out of that site, but it doesn't matter what the signs say. People do what people do. So I, I think it's important that we get the pavement markings and the signage put up. I think it's important that it be maintained, but I think the education is going to be a big part. The first time you see somebody trying to pull out of the inn, um, well, we've all been to a McDonald's. We see what happens there. People don't, they don't care. Um, so it's all, it's, it's a very valid point. So I'm sorry, I didn't mean to take away from your, your That's commentary, okay. but. No, no problem. <laughs> Anything further? That concludes my. Thank you. You let me finish it, didn't you? <laughs> I can hear your voices going, so I thought I'd better. <laughs> All right. I uh, have one sure. personal question. Andrew, I don't know if you know or not, but uh, one of the residents brought the question up. Is there a requirement? Uh, is that a new um, road cut or entrance off of Sheridan Road that will require an IDOT permit? There, the uh, question that was asked related to uh, the oak forest right. frontage, uh, it is not a new cut. It's sort of an informal opening right now on oak forest. It doesn't affect the uh, right of way at Sheridan. What about the other one that we're showing on the, the site plan as being the entrance? Is that currently in a? That's currently active. They do not need uh, so they don't a have new IDOT permit for that. <clears throat> and I see that with the curb or the island, the landscape island that's being put in a lot along Oak Forest, that's within the right-of-way, right up to the property line, but there still is 26 feet of pavement width outside of that, right? The, the sidewalk and the landscape island, am I reading that correctly? There's still 26 feet of pavement width for Oak Forest? Yes, the, yes. the driving, yeah. the driving uh, lanes and in Oak Forest are not affected. Okay. Yeah, I mean, like what Andrew said, that corner at Oak Forest and Sheridan is, is completely undeveloped. Just It's undefined at yeah, all. Yeah, undefined. Right? So, I mean, if we needed to make this wider than that 26 feet at that first, we probably could. Um, that I was just kind of keeping the, the width of those typical streets. But I mean, once we get civil engineering, we'll have to you know look at all this and find out what uh, I'll die, I'll, I'll, Lake County Department, or is, is that is that Illinois? I Sheridan Roads, Illinois, yeah. Okay. I, I, was, I was thinking about the one comment about there being a bus stop there. I, I currently, I see the kids standing in the middle of that undefined paved area. Now at least there'll be a sidewalk and a curb there that'll be more of a traditional uh, place to stand uh, waiting for the bus, assuming they are supposed to wait on that south side. Yeah. It's been a bus stop for a long time. Right. Right, but now it, it, it'll be more defined with a sidewalk and a curb. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything further? No? 
We do have one. Um, yes. The actual structure itself will be brought up to code. Yes. And the fire department, I will assume, will go in and. Yes. Yep. Yep. Right now, it's a shell, correct? Correct. Yeah. Yep. Empty shell. Empty shell. Yep. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? Um, we have incorporated into the ordinance, um, um, or the proposed ordinance, I should say, um, a, uh, a series of um, conditions. Um, we have done uh, a fair job tonight of addressing uh, specifics on uh, concerns on site. Um, traffic will always be an issue on Sheridan Road with any development and um, um, we have um, a, a challenging at best commercial district. We have a lot of shallow frontage um, on, on Sheridan Road. It's the way it was subdivided and if you go back in Beach Park, as long as I do, it used to be a two-lane road, and now it's a five-lane road. And that two-lane road had a lot deeper lots adjacent to it, so the state uh, didn't do anybody any favors when it, uh, when it widened, although it did certainly help for traffic. Um, it's one of our challenges uh, for uh, any development coming on Sheridan Road. Um, I do, I do want to, before we, we take a vote, and um, um, I do want to thank everybody for their comments. Um, I've got a full page and a half of chicken scratch here. Um, I heard it all. I heard, I saw in the video um, what's driving a lot of the concerns, um, and I do appreciate that. Nothing, you know, they say pictures with a thousand words. Well, there was way more than a thousand words there. Um, I, uh, I, would join in everyone's concern about the way the site would look and uh, the way the trash is flowing over there. Having a business on York House Road, I can tell you that although we don't generate the stuff that lands in our parkway, I'm amazed. There must be a lot of people driving drunk. Um, the, the alcohol bottles that I pull out of my grass every week. Um, and it's just, um, Never mind the things I can't talk about publicly that I pull out of the grass in our yard. Um, it's just amazing what comes out of people's cars. So um, uh, I'm, I'm not without sympathy for someone trying to maintain a nice site. Um, on the other hand, uh, I think that video did say a lot. Um, and it has, I have my share of concerns. On the other hand, I would offset that with my concerns, those concerns with my confidence in our code enforcement. So. Um, and um, although code enforcement may not always be swift in the end result, um, we've taken, taken many matters to the point of um, where we don't want to be. We've revoked plan, uh, conditional use permits um, because of bad behavior on the, on the part of business owners. And um, I, I, as long as I'm mayor and as long as we have the board that we have, if this was, is to pass tonight, I can promise that um, that same reality is there. For a person to make the investment that uh, this businessman would be making in our town and to, to let it turn into something like what we saw in that video, uh, he would be risking that investment in our town. Um, maybe not in Waukegan, but certainly here. Um, well, Mayor, if I yes. might, as in considering this petition, there's a couple things that I think we need to look at. And one, of course, is the concerns of the neighbors um, and the traffic. And I share that. Um, this it, it, it's businessman's right to try and, and build a business wherever he wants to. That, that's permitted. But this is a very tight site. Yep. And um, I, I suspect we will code enforcement will be ticketing customers that will be parking up and down the street when the place is full. Because you can't, as you mentioned, you can't control people's mm -hmm. people's habits. So that's going to be an issue. Um, on the other side of it, this building has been derelict. We've been struggling. The village has been struggling. I imagine the neighbors. 
uh, with what's going to happen with this thing. Does it need to get demolished? Does it need to, who's going to, you know, we, we haven't had a lot of interest in this thing over the years. It's just been sitting there and, and rotting. Um, and, and in addition to that, of course, there, as we discussed earlier, it is a, it is a, it, a, a grocery store is a permitted use there without the conditions that this petitioner is asking for. And I'm looking at the list of things they've asked for, and they're basically landscaping, a, a, a two-foot change in setback, and some landscaping things. So it's re the, the requested things are relatively minor. The demands that we're making of the petitioner are a lot of the other items we've discussed here tonight. Those are the requirements that we're adding on in order to allow these these uh, uh, things that he's asked for. So, uh, you know, we don't want to lose track of that, that, that the, the, what, what's being asked of us tonight is just those modifications to the zoning uh, and nothing more. Not can I build a grocery store. They can uh, without any of these conditions. Yep. And that is that is the balancing act of, of and, and, and I will, uh, to, just to add on to that, one of the nice things about a plan development um, is we work together. Um, I, I've heard it called uh, many things, but a plan development allows the give and take, um, uh, the give on the part of the village maybe to allow for setback <laughs> variations or for some other variation. We're not even uh, uh, varying parking requirements. I mean, every, we're, we're, we're nine out of the ten things that are required here or, or 90 percent of the things that are required are, are already in place as you said some of the the deviations uh, from setbacks and that are a result of the tight site so uh, I, I don't minimize that but uh, you are correct in, in that we have a use table and if the petitioner came to us and said I want to build a 3200 square foot grocery store I will meet every requirement that you have, I can do it. They would be just applying for building permits. So you're correct in pointing that out. Well, I, I, I hope if the board approves this thing tonight that a year from now these folks will be happy neighbors and yeah. and that these this gentleman here makes sure that they are. Yeah. All right. Any further discussion before we? One quick um, comment I'd like to make too, and you know, it was something that I had seen in the videos um, were the picnic tables that are at the current Waukegan store. Um, of course, you know, those are not part listed down as a part of this particular um, project, along with um, no sale of alcohol and things like that. Mm -hmm. Right, translate? Mm hmm. Please. was never the intention of the petitioner to have the sale of alcohol. He doesn't have it in any of his establishments. And he only will sell food to go, not for anybody to stand and eat or sit or do anything around there. It will be, that's, that was, I believe, was uh, discussed previously and was stated. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes. I know you're tired of hearing from me probably, but um, <laughs> one thing since the discussion about the privacy fence, I know that the, uh, or Mr. Cornelia, uh, it, that he owns that fence that's that's on there, it's on his property. Yes. Now obviously if this, if this gets paved and the alley is built, that's going to be pretty close to there. Obviously that it would be pitched away from there so melting snow would run away and everything but that it's not a brand new fence I was just wondering if you would commit to the the owner of the property behind you if something happens to that fence that you will swiftly repair it because uh, it would more than likely be a result of someone on your property he's had it a long time and it hasn't been hit but there's a potential for that to be hit and I think it is important to have that privacy fence buffer between residential and commercial okay. um, and perhaps more than six feet on high. Well, it's, it's existing. Any potential. Yes, if there's any damage to the fence or anything that is caused by his establishment to that fence, he will agree to repair it with not any question. Yeah, just, it'll be hard to prove who did it if there's not a video camera or surveillance or something, but obviously. 
there's a much higher chance of it being hit with an alley being paved right up alongside. Well, in fact, he he will have surveillance cameras. He will have cameras. In place. Okay. Oh yes, absolutely. All right. I just would hate to see I'm that. I will we'll offer it, uh, the access to that to, to that uh, videos to to Beach Park yeah. anytime. Right. No okay. Problem. Which is another another thing that uh, can be used to further give MP the enforcement of the Right. Okay. Yeah, or anything that could potentially cause flooding to that neighbor. Sure. Yeah, it would have to be pitched so it ran away. Okay. I think that's all. <laughs> all right. I'm looking both ways. All right. Well, um, we're at that point. We've heard from our citizenry. We've heard from the petitioner. We've heard questions from the board. Um, we've deliberated uh, in the sense of uh, getting those responses. And uh, I would say it's time to call the question. So if Ma the clerk would please. Mayor, I, let me Mayor if I could, I think uh, from the staff perspective, we heard two additional conditions that were defined that aren't specifically listed uh, in the ordinance. So. Um, I, I, if you'd like to add them, one includes uh, Trustee Wells' comments about the signs, and if you'd like to add a condition that the directional parking signs be added and maintained in the parking lot, uh, that would need to be modified in the motion, uh, as well as uh, Trustee Otterson's comments uh, regarding you know the fence repair uh, to the east side. Uh, we have nothing in there at this time, so I would suggest that. If you want to entertain those two as additional conditions, as agreed to by the petitioner, you would add those to the motion. Thank you. If I might suggest then, um, we had the motion by Trustee Wells and a second by Trustee Jensen. Uh, I might uh, suggest the following language be added to the uh, motion. I will read the motion uh, and then I will um, propose the uh, two conditions if, uh, if I might. Uh, the motion on the table is an ordinance granting preliminary and final approval of a planned unit development to facilitate the establishment of a grocery store with carryout food service in the Sheridan Road Corridor Overlay District B1 underlying zoning for La Mexicanita Grocery at 38835 North Sheridan Road. Um, at, at staff's recommendation and the board's request, uh, we would add two additional conditions to that motion. Um, uh, the first condition being that uh, traffic signs and pavement markings um, as approved by staff uh, would be uh, erected and maintained to aid in traffic flow. And the second condition uh, being that, uh, as the petitioner stated, um, any uh, damage caused to adjacent uh, the neighbor's fence on the uh, east side of the alleyway uh, would be repaired uh, by the uh, developer, by the property owner. Um, and and um, if that would be acceptable, I would then ask for Trustee Wells to amend his motion thusly. So moved. We have a motion by Trustee Wells to adjust, to uh, <coughs> alter that, and to Trustee Jensen. Of course, I'm amenable to that. All right. Uh, so I, there's one question. Would, yes. uh, you're assuming then that the property owner, the owner of the fence is agreeable to, to the repairs as well. <laughs> Anything to muck it up. <laughs> He's here. Would you like to ask him? <laughs> um, let's, let's try to keep it at least at the level we've got it uh, because I can see a rabbit trail coming. I, I agree with them. Yeah. Okay. So we have uh, the motion and second have been amended. Uh, I would ask the clerk to please call the roll. Trustee Wells. Aye. Trustee Jensen. Aye. Trustee Miller. Aye. Trustee Adderson. Aye. Trustee Siddick. Aye. Okay. The motion carries. The motion was unanimous. Um, I would ask that the, the public, uh, you've, made, you've made your concerns clear. You've heard that we've heard them. And I would ask that you would um, hold us accountable to that. And that comes uh, through your diligence as neighbors, through filling us in, through talking to our code enforcement people. If you're seeing things that don't agree with what you heard here tonight, and um, 
you know, it, it does take all of us to, to um, kind of close this accountability loop. And I think we hear that we've got a willing participant in the form of the owner. Um, but we have work to do as the village in order to assure that that actually happens. And the way we know about it is when you see it, you tell us. If we see it, we'll deal with it. But if we haven't seen it yet, bring it to our attention. Um, I'm excited on one hand to see this business uh, come to Beach Park. I'm excited that we will have it. <coughs> I've had more comments about this boarded up building than any other property in the village. Uh, and, and from some of you in the neighborhood. Um, but at the same time, um, we don't want to impose a, a problem uh, that would be long lasting on you. And that, for that, we all have to participate in that. So um, I, I, I'll pledge my, uh, my efforts and my staff's efforts to hold the petitioner accountable to uh, their promises and we will do our level best to make sure it's a success for them and a success for Beach Park and hopefully a good place to stop in and grab a bite and uh, do some shopping. So I'd like to thank the board for your consideration tonight. Um, um, I, we, we don't often get the chance to do this at this level um, because typically the Planning Commission has dealt with so many of these issues and come up with, with a, a recommendation. So. Uh, today was a bit of an education for all of us, and I'm, I'd like to thank you for your participation as well. Um, then, moving on, uh, Trustee Wells, I would ask, is there anything else in your... Uh, I conclude my report. You yeah. sure took a long time. Uh, we'll move on uh, public relations and intergovernmental agreement. Trustee Miller. Well, I have two microphones in there. <laughs> uh, I, I just have one item. Uh, I'd like to extend thanks to the Our Lady of Humility Knights of Columbus. Once again, they did a cleanup of North Avenue, our stretch of North Avenue, that goes from Blanchard Road to Wadsworth Road. And we thank them. We appreciate them. They are volunteers. Volunteers are volunteers are gold. Um, so it looks nice now. I hope it stays that way for a while. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, all right, then, um, Public Safety Committee, Trustee Siddick. Thank you. I have no report this evening. All right. Move on to Public Works Committee, Trustee Otterson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, a couple items tonight. Uh, the first one being a uh, right away vacation. Uh, they were discussed, uh, there's two of them. They were both discussed at the uh, Public Works Committee and, and with the staff. Um, See, the first one uh, is, uh, a, it's uh, unincorporated Fairbanks Avenue, north of 38932 Sheridan Road. Um, the ordinance will not be in effect until the payment of the cost in the amount of $7,500 is paid to the village uh, by the adjacent property owner. So I will make a motion to adopt the ordinance vacating unimproved Fairbanks north of 38932 Sheridan Road. Second that. All right, we have a motion and a second. Discussion? All right, hearing none, I would ask the clerk to please call the roll. Trustee Judson. Aye. Trustee Miller. Aye. Trustee Addison. Aye. Trustee Siddick. Aye. Trustee Wells. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, thank you. The second one is similar. The one that we spoke about earlier this evening, and you've uh, waited. The suspense has been killing everybody so much that they've all left. But um, this is a motion to adopt an ordinance vacating a portion of the unimproved alley east of 39221 Green Bay Road. Um, uh, again, the ordinance uh, will not take effect until the payment of $2,342.40 is uh, paid uh, to the village by the adjacent property owner, and I will put that in a motion, a form of a motion to approve. Oh, okay. no. Nope. We have a motion by Trustee Addison, a second by Trustee Miller. Without a microphone. Without. <laughs> She's got three. What are you talking about? <laughs> Grab Richards over there, too, while you're at it. Uh, discussion. I think we should round these things. There's a penny shortage. We should always round these to the nearest dollar. You know that people probably don't use actual cash for this, right? <laughs> 
Or he'll pay it all in pennies just to be spiteful. Um, I've seen that done. Yeah. Don't do that. All right. Uh, other discussion? All right. Roll call, please. Trustee Miller. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Siddick. Aye. Trustee Wells. Aye. Trustee Jensen. Aye. All right. <clears throat> okay. There's one more thing under public works, I believe. Um, an ordinance authorizing the sale or disposal of surplus personal property owned by the Village of Beach Park. In this case, there's one item on the list, and that would be a 2000 international dump truck with an 11 foot plow included. Sounds like something everyone should have. Someone, I, I think people like with storage garage facilities oh, no. and things oh, like no. that should have a nice big snow plow. Um, <laughs> So I will, uh, let's see the wording again. I will put that in the form of a motion to approve the ordinance for disposal of that one item of personal property of the village. Second. We have a motion by Trustee Addison, second by Trustee Miller. Discussion? No, we're not buying a snow plow. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Um, <laughs> roll call, please. Trustee Addison? Aye. Trustee Siddick? Aye. Trustee Wells? Aye. Trustee Jensen? Aye. Trustee Miller? Aye. Motion carries. And in case anyone wondered, we are not going to be short a truck this winter that is being removed because of the snazzy new one that was at the last board meeting sitting out in front that we had ordered and budgeted for. So I believe we'll probably get some money for this truck in the municipal auction or whatever the, yeah. the form is. So. Um, we're not disposing of it. It's practically new. It's 21 years old. Yeah, and only. I remember disposing of a couple of 1992 yes. mm -hmm. vehicles that we inherited from the township when the village was incorporated that we kept running for a long time. So yep. we've got a, a good running fleet. So this one uh, is ready to retire. Excellent. And that's right. the end of my agenda. Thank you very much. Uh, I have no report on behalf of the Tax Increment Finance Committee tonight. Um, any additional staff reports? No. All right. We have no old or new business. Is there any citizen that would wish to address the board about any topic? Oh. I don't know. I have not heard anything one way or the other. There's a rumor afloat that he may have passed away. He did. Okay, thank okay. you. Yeah. So we do have knowledge. Yeah. Um, uh. He uh, he was a trustee uh, starting on day one with the village. Who is this? Marty. Uh, Marty, oh. um, Marty served um, probably 12 years as a trustee, I want to say, 10 years, something like that. Um, had a deep passion for the village and worked hard, and um, certainly will be missed. Yeah. Well, since we lower our flag with week. some frequency, and although it's not on our agenda, I would, I would suggest that we do that. Uh, that would be out of respect for. Do I have the authority to lower the flag oh at the village at, for any any, any cause? That would be a negative. No. If we had a village flag, I could lower that. Uh, you can lower anything. You want. Who's going to stop you? I'll call the governor. Sounds like the attorney. Just did. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I said my piece. We could put it on the sign. We could put it on the sign out front. R.I.P. Former Trustee big. Mr. Stanovic. All right. Well, um, I didn't hear any citizens wanting to, to address the board, so I guess. Mayor. Huh? It'd be my honor to offer a motion to adjourn. Second by Siddick. We have a motion and a second, and uh, there is no uh, cause for discussion. Roll call, please. Trustee Siddig. Aye. Trustee Wells. Aye. Trustee Jensen. Aye. Trustee Miller. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you all so much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.